All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD Application and Website Development 1100 C Sharp Programming Course, I've been doing a series of introductory videos based on the textbook for the class, which is Murox C Sharp 8th Edition. I've gone through 16 of 22 chapters, which means we're on chapter 17. How to work with file IO. IO is, of course, standing for input output. There are two types text files, which you can read with any editor, and binary files, which you cannot. So, they're going to talk about both in this chapter. You may have known this, you may not, but if I come through here and I make a new file, okay, and I save this as hello world, okay, now if I actually save this and put it out on the desktop and I save it as hello world dot text okay there it is but the point is I can close this I can open it up again and I can open it up in you know a text editor because it is a text file now if I come through here and I change this so I'm going to just change the extension on here from hello world.txt to hello world.dat, like it's a data file. All right. Yes, I want to change it. Now when I open it in here, all right, I can still see it. With some files, when you do that and you have a .dat file, you cannot open it. All right. Now what happens? I, I don't know. I'm just going to try this. I'm going to make it a .xls, all right, which should make it a spreadsheet file. And if I try to open that, even though it just says hello world, all right, oh, still let me do it. Okay, I'm surprised. How about one more? We're going to change this to hello world.docx. All right, it is now a Word file except it didn't take the period. So hello world dot docx. There it is. Now if I try to open it up, still let me. I am surprised. Now I don't know if it's got an old cached version in there or what, but I now have this. Where is it? And it's saying word experienced an error trying to open the file. Okay, well, it doesn't like something about it. Let's just change everything that's in here. And we'll just make it hello world dot dot doc. See if it takes that. Okay. And there it is. Pretty much what you'd expect. And now that we've opened it in there, let's see if we can open it still in here. We can. But what you're going to find is, for example, here, here is this Word file that we had before, this What is Object Oriented Programming. I'm going to try to open that up in Notepad. And look what I get. Why? Because this is not a text file. This is a binary file. So it's trying to use a different type of program. It's trying to take a file that's in one format and open it like it's a file in another format. All right. So we'll get an intro to the system.io classes, how to work with text files, and then how to work with binary files. About a 20 page long chapter. So it says here, figure 17.1 on the next page will summarize the classes of the system.io namespace. As you can see, you see that, see those to manage directories, files, and file paths. All right, so let's take a look. So you'll need this, oh, they don't show it, but as an example, if I came into the program that we've got up right here, I don't have anything I'm saving. Well, maybe we are using, I don't think we're using files in here. All right, but I could say using 
system.io, all right, which would allow me to use all the different goodies that exist, such as the directory class, the file class, and the path class. The directory, well, if I'm going to go and try to open something, I can check first to see if it exists. I can also come in and say if it doesn't exist to create it. I can say if it does exist to delete it. The recursive is special. It means not just remove the file or the folder or the, or the directory, but remove everything underneath it as well. All right. The file class, same kind of thing. Does the file exist? Deleting the file, copying the file from one place to another, moving the file from one place to another. And you see there are examples here. I'm not going to read through any of them. All right. I will mention, you'll notice that when we've got this path here, we've got the at sign at the beginning. What that at sign will do is it'll turn off the special meaning of the backslash. All right. It's not waiting for it like this. It doesn't read this as a backslash C or a backslash F. All right. It says it's just a backslash. So as mentioned, the classes are stored in the system.io namespace. Visual Studio 2022 generates a global using directive for this namespace by default when you create a new project, meaning you don't have to include it anymore. All right, all of these methods are static, meaning that you can call all of the directory methods, all of the file methods, all of the path methods without having to create a directory or file or path object. All right, so again, already mentioned two different types of files, text files and binary files, even though I've shown you. Here's the author showing this products.txt file and another file with basically the same information but a products.dat file. All right. So again, as it says in a text file, all data is stored as characters. All right. By contrast, the data in a binary file can include text characters and data types. All right. To handle the IO operations with text and binary files, .NET uses streams. And you kind of think of a stream as basically turning on a hose. It's a flow of information that's going from one place to another place. As it says here, for instance, an output stream can flow from the internal memory of an app to a disk file. An input can go from the disk file to the memory of the computer. When you work with a text file, you use a text stream. When you work with a binary file, you work with a binary stream. The major components and stuff you work with are going to be shown here. So there's the two types of files. There's the two types of streams. So you'll notice when you look here, a file stream provides access to input and output files regardless of the type. But a stream reader and a stream writer are used for text files. A binary reader and a binary writer are used for non-text files. All right. All right. So as it says, to create a stream that connects to a file, you use the file stream class as shown on the next page. So let's take a look. And there's different ways that you can do this, too, just so you know. All right. We've got new file stream and notice the path, the mode. And when we look at the mode that's in here, you can see right away. Append is interesting. Append opens the file if it exists and it puts the what's called the file pointer at the end of the file if the file doesn't exist it's created as it says you can only append with write file access create creates a new file if a file by that name already exists it's overwritten even if it was a humongous file and you're replacing it with a smaller file it doesn't matter Create new works the same way, except if the file already exists, rather than overwriting it, it throws an exception. So it's a little safer, I guess you would say, usage. All right.
open opens an existing file as it says if the file doesn't exist it throws an exception open or create is the same way except if the file does not exist it creates it truncate opens an existing file and truncates it so that its size is zero bytes and again basically it does that by moving this file pointer to the beginning of the file all right if you use read access you can read a file but not write to it if you use read write access you can both read to it and write read from it and write to it as it says that's the default if you use write you can write to it but not read from it the file share i'm going to let you read those yourselves whenever you open up a file stream you should always close it when you're done if you don't do it because you forgot to don't want to or whatever technically when the program completes it should be closed by the by the system but as a safety mechanism you should always do a close all right so as it says operating system level permissions may limit which file access and file share options you you can use all right how to use exception classes well again stuff happens there's four exception classes as it says here for file io to my knowledge the most generic one so the one you'd probably use last would be that first one there io exception all right directory not found that should, exception that should make sense file not found exception that should make sense end of stream exception if you attempt to read beyond the end of a file stream really beyond the end of the file and as always there's some examples here again the io exception since it's the, since it's the most general is down at the bottom text files now the rest of the chapter is broken up into two different sections how to work with text files and then how to work with binary files all right so as it says to read and write characters in the text file you use a stream reader and a stream writer all right so figures the figure shows you how to use the stream writer class to write data to a text file it says to do that you specify a stream you create with a stream writer object then you can write to it by using the write and write line methods very similar to the console.write and the console.write line method we used for console programs the difference is rather than writing it to the console you're writing it to a file when you use write line it automatically adds the line terminator all right so if we look here okay this would do very similarly to what we had talked about earlier all right it would write the code then a pipe sign and a space then the description then a pipe sign and a space and then the price those would all be on the same line and after it writes the price it would go down to the next line because it's a right line that's in there and again as you can see we use we open up a stream writer all right it's in create mode it's with write and we close when we're done reading of course would be just the opposite now there's a couple things in here at least one that's a little bit different peak peak is known as a look ahead type of method meaning it looks into the at the next character and as long as there is another character it returns that character if there are no more characters available meaning you've reached the end of the file it returns negative one all right read as it said reads the next character read line the next line read to end takes from where you currently are in the file and re reads the rest of it and close we've already talked about so again here's some more examples so you use the stream reader object to read data from a text file just as you use the stream writer object to write data to a text file because the records in most files end with a line terminator you'll typically use a read line method to read one record at a time if a field is delimited by special characters 
you'll need to parse them. We talked about this when we looked at some of the string stuff earlier. And I talked about the peak already. Now, this using statement that's in here and the using declaration, it basically is a little bit of a time saver. So when we look at it in here, you'll notice inside of the using, we basically have created everything. So we've got a method with a using statement right here. And then we've got another method down here with a using declaration. And they look almost the same. The difference, when we use the using statement, all right, our for each is embedded inside of that. So this is like basically a unit. When we use the using declaration, they're two different units or however you want to mention it. So as it says, the using statement causes any resources to be released from memory when the object goes out of scope. To use the using statement, you code the using keyword followed by the object declaration and a block of code that uses the object. C Sharp 8.0 introduced the using declaration where you simply code the using keyword at the beginning. All right. All right, here's a class that works with a text file. All right, so this is that product DB that we looked at earlier, but didn't. If you remember, this is the one that was in our program, but we didn't really look at it because we had not yet talked about files. All right, so what is this saying? This is saying that we want to save this to our C drive. We want to create a folder called C, C Sharp and under there, we want to create a folder called files. And underneath there, we want a file called products.txt. Why should you care? Well, take a look. All right, I'm going to move this up. There we go. And I'm going to go to the C drive. And under the C drive, I've got a folder named C sharp. Under that folder named C sharp, I have a folder named files. Under the folder files, I've got a file called products.txt that I made today. And if I open up that file, there it is. So, in other words, what do we have here? Well, we've got a string representing the directory. We've got a string representing the path. We've got a string representing the separator. All right. Then we've got a method that's going to return a list of products, and it's called get products. And it says if the directory does not exist, create it. So that'll be that directory. Then we've got a using statement in here. I should say, I guess, the using declaration. And then we're coming in and we're creating our new list of products and we're telling it to look. And as long as there's something to read, Read that current row. All right. And split it based on the separator. And that separator was already defined to be the pipe sign. All right. If the length of the columns is three, we've got a new product. So the first column is the code. The second column is the description. The third column is the price. Okay and we end up adding it to our list of products and we return that. That's pretty much what we have been doing. Now, binary files, again, work in a similar manner. The difference, though, again, is you cannot read binary files with a simple text editor. All right. We'll still use the file stream as the argument, and but now we'll use a binary writer instead of a stream writer and a binary reader instead of a stream reader. Again, we've got a write, all right, and we've got a close. You use a binary writer to write data to a binary file. In most cases, you'll write a field at a time in a prescribed sequence, that's what we're doing. The binary class provides just the right method. The method determines the type of data being written based on the data type of the argument. 
So this is reading a binary file. Come on. And as you can see, now it's peak char instead of peak, but we've got a read. You'll also notice there's a read, you know, for just about every type of data. Because again, the system needs to know the type of data that it is returning, be it Boolean, byte, char, decimal, in 32, string, etc. I don't believe these are not all the methods. These are just the ones you probably use the most often. All right, so there's an example in here. We're opening this up for read access. While there is something to read, we're just basically reading it. All right, and we're going to add it to wherever we want to show it. So as mentioned here, you use a binary reader object to read a single character or an entire field from a binary file. To read a single character, it's the read method. To read a field, you can use the method that indicates the type of data the field contains, like we just looked at. The peak char determines whether or not you're at the end of the stream. So here they went back, and I think they did basically the same thing as before. But they're now using a binary file, products.dat, as opposed to what we had before, which was products.txt. That's it. I realized that there wasn't much to go over. It didn't take very long. So when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about link. All right. I will tell you that this will not be an extensive discussion of link, but I've got a couple programs and a couple of examples that we will create together, which will really show a lot about link. And just so you know, you will actually end up using link quite a bit. All right especially in the fourth semester in the AWD 1115 Database Driven Website Development 2 class. So I'll be back with that discussion in just a couple minutes.